This GUI introduces lag compensation and is also linked to the offset videos. So the aim here is to show the use of lag compensation in a simple aerospace scenario. So a radar dish or antenna is tasked to point at a flying object. And the movement of the object is such that the target is equivalent to a ramp trajectory. It's not going to be exactly the same, but it's going to be pretty close to a ramp trajectory. Now, in general, when we look at offsets and things, if we want to track ramps with zero offset, we need two integrators. And what you will have understood from your control analysis is that we really don't want to include two integrators unless absolutely necessary. So instead, what we're going to do here is focus on minimizing the size of the offset. We're going to accept there will be some offset when tracking a ramp, but what we want to do is make that offset as small as possible. And that's, of course, why we're going to use a lag. Now, if you're wondering why that's reasonable, here's what you might get with a typical antenna. And you can see that the view is not a single point. It's actually got a range of angles. So as long as your offset is less than this distance here, or equivalently, this angle theta, then you can still track the object. So some offset in terms of the pointing direction of the antennae is acceptable. But still, we want to keep that theta as small as possible. So some modeling and requirements. The direction of pointing of the antenna can be approximated by an integrator with a lag. Um, so that's a bit like a position control of a DC servo. So you'll see the model we've got is this one here. The G of S is given by C over S brackets TS plus 1. Now, within the GUI that we're going to demonstrate, both the parameters C and the parameters T can be selected by the user to change the system dynamics. Now, the control law is going to be a lag compensator, and we're going to use this structure of lag compensator. So you see we've separated out some gain, k lag, and then we've written the compensator, uh, the dynamic bit, as s plus a over s plus a over r. How do we calculate the offset to a ramp, then? If we assume a simple compensator m and g with a feedback loop like this, then the offset to a unit ramp is determined using the final value theorem, which you will have done elsewhere. So here's the formula that you're going to use. The offset limits s goes to 0 of 1 over 1 plus g of s m of s times 1 over s. And that reduces to this formula here, which if we substitute in the parameters from the previous page, we're going to end up with this sort of answer. Now, I should note here <coughs> that in this final answer, I've assumed a particular value for k lag. And I'm not going to dwell on that. You can follow that later in these slides. So for simplicity, this GUI assumes the lag design begins from a proportional control law, k lag, giving a 60 degree phase margin. So if you basically take this system here and say, I want a 60 degree phase margin, and then you find the corresponding k lag, then what you will find is that's where this formula here has come from. OK, the final compensated system increases the steady state gain by a factor of r. So when we add the dynamics of the lag compensator, this part here, you'll see that in the steady state, s plus a over s plus a over r has a steady state gain of r. So we can increase the steady state gain by r. So in other words, we can reduce the offset by a factor of r. Now, a typical choice of a it's going to be omega g over 10, where omega g is the gain crossover frequency, and that's standard in lag design. So some student activities. Investigate the efficacy of lag compensation. So can you track the flying object effectively? So you could try slow-moving objects and fast-moving objects. What's the impact of changing the parameter r? Can you actually see the impact? Try small r, try large r. And what's the impact of changes in the antenna parameters on the speed of response and tracking? So you have these antenna parameters C and T. If you change those, how does it affect the behavior?
Now to run the GUI, which you can use to play around, you need the P code file and the fig file. And then, in simple terms, make sure you're in the right folder. You can see this is the folder where I've stored mine. And then simply type the file name, which here is Radar GUI. And this is what it looks like. And you'll see we've got a number of sliders, which hopefully are fairly obvious. The top values here are the system gain. That's the value C. The second slider here is the system time constant. That's the value T. The third one is the ratio of the pole to zero in the lag, so that's the value R. And the final one is the ramp rate of the target, so essentially you're choosing your target. So you've got a number of things you can choose, and then you'll see the plots, you'll see the antennae here, you'll see the target there, which looks like a star, and then you'll see the target here in red and the actual output in blue. And obviously you're going to have some offset, but your job is to make the offset small. So let's set you some challenges. Oh no, sorry. Let's uh, rather go to the GUI and run it. So there's the GUI. And so if we go start, is that, uh, is that actually moving? Yep, there we go. So what you can do is you can see the antennae here is trying to track this particular object and it's got an offset. And in this particular case, you can see exactly how big the offset is. So what happens if I increase the R? And what you'll notice is it should get closer okay, to the target. So the idea is, oh, do I need to press that one to update? Yes, I have to update first. Sorry, that button doesn't update till I press that button. And you'll see once I update, you'll see it's now getting closer to the target. I can increase the ramp rate. So we're faster moving. And you see if it's moving faster, it's harder for me to keep up. I can reduce the error again by making that R bigger and updating it. What happens if I change things like the system time constant? So let's make the time constant bigger and slow down the ramp rate. Now you'll see we're going the other way. And you'll see the dynamics are a bit slower, but the general principles still apply. So the idea here is you can investigate the impact of different parameters, change the system gain, system time constant, change the R, Right, and you'll see if the R is small, the offset is bigger, and if the R is big, the offset is smaller. Oh, looks like we've crashed it. That took some doing. Okay, so students should understand the impact of lag compensation on closed loop tracking and recognize that in general we cannot remove offset to ramps with just a lag. But we can use the lag to control the size of the offset to some level. And clearly this is a relevant design method to aerospace applications. Remark, this GUI uses an automatic tuning rule for the lag compensation. That's just to make life simple. But you may want to say, OK, can I do this offline and improve performance with a more advanced tuning method?